Great morning, great morning, great morning. House of Joy, Health Essential attendees, I welcome you to this session of Health Essentials as we expand today concerning our heart health. My title is Love is in the Air. You know, today is the, of course, the world celebrates uh, Valentine's Day on today. But when we think of our heart, when we think of, of love, rather, we think of our hearts, right? So today, I do want to expand upon America's war against heart disease, all right? Um, 75 years ago, it started, and I'll expand a little bit more upon that. And it seems as though in America, you know, we're losing the battle against the it's a, heart disease, heart uh, problems are the number one killer. And I'll talk a little bit today about, you know, why and what can help, how we can help that. And we know that God said in his word, according to Psalms 1914, it says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Now, we know that as God works upon our hearts through his precious Holy Spirit, we must cooperate with him, right? So therefore, our thoughts must be bound about, praise the Lord, um, restrict it was drawn from branching out and contemplating things, you know, that will weaken and defile our soul, which we know is our mind, our will, and our emotions. Our thoughts must be pure. The meditations of our heart must be clean, praise the Lord. And if the words of the mouth are in the word to, to be words acceptable to heaven, all right, and helpful to our associates, so people that the Holy Spirit will lead us to minister to. So our words should be helpful, praise the Lord. So let me, um, let us go to the throne of prayer. All right. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for another day's journey, Lord God, another opportunity to expand upon what thus saith the Lord, where our health and wellness is concerned, Lord God. I continually thank you for this platform, Lord God, and for the privilege and opportunity to speak to your people where their health and wellness is concerned. And my prayer is that it, these words resonate with them, Lord God, that they will want to and desire to live a good quality of life because we know that's why Jesus Christ and that we would have life and have it more abundantly and that includes good health so Lord I just thank you and praise you and bless all those that are joining in even now and that will listen on even later we give you all the praise all the honor and all the glory today and always in Jesus mighty name I pray amen and amen all right so again America's war against heart disease let me share with you a few, five, actually I have five, amazing facts about the human heart, okay? Now, the blood vessels in our heart are the most likely to clog. The reasons, because blood flows in two directions in many arteries within our body, creating turbulence that can damage our artery walls, which makes it easier for plaque to set in. Now, coronary arteries, they have lots of branches and bends, which are prime real estate for arterial sclerosis. So that's an interesting fact that the blood vessels in our heart are the most likely to clog. Number two, nearly half of all heart attacks have no symptoms. We're going to go a little bit more in depth about that. Um, according to a 2016 Wake Forest University study, no symptom attacks were more common in men, but deadlier in women. All right, we'll expand on that. So number three, the best food for our heart, it might be bananas. Now in a 2020 analysis of studies involving more than 4 million people, bananas were associated with 24% lower risk for coronary heart disease, but all produce helps our heart, all produce. People who consumed the most fruits and vegetables had 11% less cardiovascular disease than those who ate the least. Number four, spare parts for our heart may come from outer space. Isn't this interesting? Now in 2020, NASA blasted cardiac stem cells into space for an Emory University study seeking to find out whether they would become beating heart muscle cells faster in zero gravity conditions, right? So the stem cells became heart cells in just three weeks. Interesting. Researchers hope to use them for heart failure repairs, 
a therapy that could require up to 150 million cells for, per treatment. So again, spare parts for our heart may come from outer space. Isn't that interesting? Number five, last one, a great sport for our heart health. So that will be a study that tracked over 80,000 adults for nine years, found that tennis and badminton, and now they have this game called pickleball, <laughs> Um, can cut the risk for fatal cardiovascular disease by 20, uh, excuse me, 59%. So swimming and aerobics lowered the odds by 41 and 36% respectively. Distance running was less effective. Some research suggests it could have a negative impact distance running on our heart health. So let's move on. And as I mentioned, those of you who are just coming in, we are talking about America's war against heart disease and how um, 75 years after it started, we're still losing the battle. Uh, but I'm going to explain, talk a little bit about um, what we can do, why, and um, what will help. Okay. So return of the killer, number one heart disease, uh, heart attacks and so forth. So in, it was in 1948, when President Harry Truman signed the National Heart Act, establishing the National Heart Institute, which is now called the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, uh, Truman also funded the landmark Framington Heart Study, the world's longest running population study of heart disease. Okay, I'm just give, laying down the facts. Now, for the next six decades, thanks to the explosion in both research and treatment, the world was thought they were winning the war on heart disease. Deaths from heart attacks, heart failure, heart rhythm disorders, and related conditions fell a stunning 69% between 1950 and 2009. But lately, the good news has been overshadowed by major reversals. So today we're looking at a crisis in terms of lowering life expectancy for the first time in decades, all right? So the new, I'm gonna talk a little bit and expand a little bit about the new heart health trends that are deeply concerning, all right? So midlife and younger adults today are dying of heart diseases more often. Why? You're probably like, well, why? Why is this happening? Death rates from heart diseases rose 8.5% for adults ages 45 to 64 between 2010 and 2020. So record numbers of older adults are dying too, unfortunately. Fatalities due to heart disease among 65 plus Americans rose um, in 2011 to a, from a lower number in 2011 to a higher number in 2020. Um, more recent data isn't yet available, all right, according to the research that I've been doing as of late. So interestingly, the heart disease death rate fell over those years, all right, from 2011 through 2020. However, the big growth in Americans' older population means a rise in total deaths. Now, the COVID pandemic I'm gonna speak briefly on this, injected rocket fuel into the heart disease resurgence. Why? In 2020 and 2021, heart attack deaths increased. Okay, I'm talking 2020 and 2021. Heart attack deaths increased by up to 21% for those 45 to 64 and 17.9% for people 65 and older, according to Cedars Sinai Medical Center study. Now that might simply be a side effect of the pandemic's long-term term legacy of weight gain, inactivity, and stress, all right? But the virus itself may be playing a direct role. A large 2022 study just last year found lingering heart risk a year after COVID infection, all right? So according to cardiologist Larissa um, Tereshinoko, I'm pronouncing that correctly, she told the journal Science that contracting COVID could emerge as the number one risk factor for future heart disease. So how important is it that we take care of these vessels? You know, our heart, well, our, our health period 
is in our hands. You know, of course we know that God holds everything in his hands, praise the Lord. But perhaps the best news about our heart health crisis is that when it comes to your own personal risk, the key to prevention is in your hands. And that means making lifestyle changes, doing all that you know to do in the natural as far as where nutrition is concerned. Um, a study showed um, from the hospitals in Bellevue in Manhattan that a suboptimal diet is responsible for a suboptimal diet, all right? We're talking about what you're putting in your body is responsible for almost half of the deaths from heart disease, stroke, and type 2 diabetes, okay? Even among those who are living at high genetic risk, a healthy lifestyle can actually reduce the risk of developing heart disease by half. So how important is it to get out there and take that walk, get out there, get that jump rope out? You know, I was jumping rope today. That's something that I've incorporated in. You know, if when you look for change um, in your um, exercise regimen, you know, it's important to change up what you're normally doing. But, you know, for instance, if you're riding the bicycle or if you're um, just lifting weights, you know, you want to shake it up a bit. So cardiovascular exercise or exercise period, again, reduces the risk of developing heart disease by half. But according to the American Heart Association, just 11% of people in their 40s and 50s and 4% 60 and older are taking these essential personal steps. 4% of 60 and older, 11% of 40s and 50s. It should not be that way. So while According to this study, while 72% of adults in a recent Harris Post said they want to talk more about self-care with their doctor, 78% of physicians in another survey said they don't have time. <laughs> they don't have time. Y'all, this is what they said in, according to a study, that they don't have time during the typical 17-minute appointment. So how important is it for us to know how our body systems work and to go in there with questions? Write down your questions before you go in. Find out how the cardiovascular system works. And if there's anything going on in your body, then you can relay that to your doctor and make them take more than that uh, time in that 17 plus minute appointment. So one in four doctors didn't even feel confident that they could even give advice. This is sad news. And in a survey of 1,000 cardiologists that National Jewish Health Freeman conducted for the American College of Cardiology, nearly 90% had little training or education in day-to-day -day nutrition. So back to how important it is that your health, period, is in how important it is for you to take um, a hold of your own health and know again the body systems and how they work and if something's out of feels out of order then you'll know because you've done the research you've done the study and you know how the your body how your body operates so this has to change right um we have to doctors need to ask patients you know about their lifestyle and keep revisiting the topic um uh, if we show if you go in there with i guess intelligent questions you know valuable questions that you have where your health and wellness is concerned, where your heart health is concerned, then that'll show the doctors the more value of it. And these would be extraordinary efforts. If and when, you know, the world wins the battle against heart disease, it will no longer be the number one killer, which it is right now. All right. So moving back to talking about, um, let's move back and talk about beyond heart attacks. Now, major reasons, let's see, moving on, I wanted to share here and make sure I got my notes in order. The neglected majority. So we're talking about heart health in men and women, okay? So for decades, women were under represented in clinical trials and their heart attack symptoms dismissed in emergency rooms. So as stomach pain or even emotional problems. So the American Heart Association published its first treatment guidelines for women in 1999. 
but it's taken longer for science to discover that the anatomy and electrical pathways of the female heart are unique, all right, which may help explain why a woman's heart attack symptoms can be different from a man's, okay? Yeah, women's heart health is still understudied. Ladies, I hope you're listening up, and men, you can share this with the women in your life. According to a 2022 review of research in the journal Circulation Research, and women's heart attack warning signs are too often overlooked. Now, in fact, in 2019, just 44% of women in the national study identified heart disease as the top killer of women, and the vast majority were unable to identify many of the symptoms of heart attacks. So both health professionals seem to have the same difficulty identifying heart disease in women. Now, this same study found that when women suffering heart attacks arrive at an emergency room, they experience longer wait times. Um, this is not good and are less likely to be seen by a heart specialist or receive an echocardiogram or potentially life-saving heart drugs. Another study found that women tend to wait longer, of course, before calling 911 when they are having heart attack symptoms up to 37 uh, minutes longer. Women are less likely to receive preventive care such as cholesterol lowering statins and treatment for heart failure and atrial fibrillation. This is not good. Gender biases, as we know in medicine, still persist. Not only gender biases, but racial biases as well. We, as a race who wear this badge, we are disproportionately served in the healthcare system. So that's why it's important for you to know again how the body systems work, write down your questions, be in tune with how your body is operating. If something is not functioning properly, go see about it. Go to the doctor, ask the questions. And if that doctor doesn't have the answer, go to another doctor. And of course, you know, we can go to Dr. Jesus, hallelujah, the master physician, because he has the answers for everything. Amen. Praise the Lord. But yet we are still in this world. So um, we're thankful that um, Jesus is interceding for us on the right hand of the father on our behalf for everything. And that includes good health. So um, he has given these doctors this information the information to be able to help us, you know, in a time of, of an emergency, but we are wholly responsible. You, in cooperation with your healthcare professional, professional, are responsible for your health, all right, but mainly you, all right. So um, there can continues to be a pervasive belief, either conscious or subconscious, among healthcare providers that heart disease is less common among, among women and that women are less likely to de derive benefit from therapies. And we, we have not been trained, our healthcare, our, our healthcare providers have not been trained, according to the study that I've researched, to recognize the unique ways that women experience heart disease. Indeed, while men are at greater risk from heart disease when they're younger, by the time women reach their 70s and 80s, their risk of heart disease actually exceeds that of men, but it doesn't have to be so because again, it goes back to lifestyle. You know, what are you doing? Are you eating healthy? Are you exercising? First and foremost, are you praying? Praise the Lord, you know? And recent research shows that high blood pressure or diabetes during pregnancy is an early warning sign of lifelong elevated heart risk even if the conditions resolved after the woman gave birth. It's health history. So in the same way, the war against heart disease has, begin, has been to slow to recognize the heart health needs of African-Americans, Hispanics, and other racial and ethnic groups. According to a 2018 CDC report, heart disease mortality rates for black adults are 21% higher, 21% higher than for whites and the black, excuse me, versus, let me go to my next page here. One second, bear with me. Stay with me in that vein. 11, all right. 
So again, the black adults are 21% higher than for whites and the black versus the white um, Caucasian people, all right? So moving on, that's the neglected majority. So I'm moving on to um, questions that we can ask our doctor about our heart when you go to your doctor. Questions that you can ask, all right? Looking for my other page here, bear with me. <laughs> and All right. Well, let's move on about four questions to ask your doctor about your heart. First and foremost, we know. Oh, let me back up just a little bit. So that just shows what I just presented to you, to you how we um, as a race are disproportionately served and how important it is for you to know um, if there's anything going on within your um, where your cardiovascular system is concerned. To, that you are responsible for being aware of it and then to be able to ask questions um, to your doctor when you go see your doctor about it. All right, so these are the questions. How's my blood pressure? Number one, 40% of Americans don't know their blood pressure numbers and 64% don't know what those numbers mean. Okay, so a 2019 survey found normal blood pressure is less than 20, 120 over 80, all right? If that top number is 120 to 129, that's elevated. If the top number is 130 or higher, or the bottom number is above 80, that's considered high. All right. So again, normal blood pressure is less than 120 over 80. If it's higher than that, that's an elevated uh, blood level reading. So that's a question you can ask your doctor. How's my blood pressure? I know um, some doctors will say 130, you know, is oh, healthy, is okay. Um, and it depends on where you are, where your health is concerned. You know, if you're um, dealing with other diseases within your body, then that can be considered high. But if you're basically a healthy person, that can maybe that can't maybe that's not considered as high. All right, um, you can also do things, you know, where your nutrition is concerned, like, you know, like eliminating salt, we are all aware of that, or cutting back on salt and also processed food, uh, fast foods, fried foods, you know, those types of things elevate our blood pressure. So eliminating those types of foods from our diet, but that's one question, number one, to ask your doctor, how's my blood pressure? Number two, what are my target cholesterol numbers and how do I measure up? So, a total cholesterol level under 200 is considered normal, but the best levels of heart-threatening low-density lipoproteins, LDLs, and triglycerides depend on your age, your gender, and whether you have other heart risk like diabetes, all right? So no wonder half the people with high cholesterol in a recent survey said they were confused about the best cholesterol levels for them and how to get there. Because cholesterol levels can be confusing. So that's why work in conjunction with your doctor to find out the best levels um, for you, you know, depending again on your age, your gender, and your weight. All right. Uh, moving on, number three. Ask your doctor, can he refer you to a dietitian? Sometimes your doctor will just tell you the numbers, you know, and maybe that they'll just go over them with you. And I've always encouraged you that when you go to your doctor to get um, a report of your vital statistics, because on that report will be um, a section of the levels where you, you are, and then a section where the levels of where you should be. And then you can read it for yourself and make a well-informed decision where your health and wellness is concerned, and hopefully in conjunction with your doctor. Um, so as I said that, um, ask them to refer you to a dietitian. Sometimes they'll just tell you what's going on and not refer you to a dietitian. So you have to ask. So 59% of heart doctors say nutrition help. Nutrition can help improve heart health as much as medications. Yes, it can. Nutrition can drastically improve your heart health. Proper nutrition versus medications do. But of course, in, say, in a case of an emergency, if you need medication, take it, you know? But in a 2021 study, 71% of doctors admitted they refer fewer 
than 10% of their patients to a registered dietitian, fewer than 10%. If your doctor isn't helpful, all right, then you can search for a dietitian in your area through the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics and also at eatright.org. And also you can tune into Health Essentials and I'll tell you what to eat. We'll talk about that in our next session, the what proper nutrition for our heart health. And we've talked about that in pa past times, but, you know, it's good to hear it again, you know, to be get a refresher course of what you can do, because there's different seasons in our life, you know, where we go through, you know, good health. Sometimes we go through seasons of not so good health, you know, um, so it's important to um, just stay in that vein of um, and being conscious of consistently eating a healthy diet, you know, like that small green salad that I tout all the time, you know, have that daily and those um, cruciferous uh, veg or veggies like cabbage, um, broccoli, cauliflower, um, kale. Those are all wonderful for your heart health, you know, dark green leafy vegetables. All right. So number three was, can you refer me to a dietitian? And we'll talk more about that in our next session. Number four, Ask your doctor, is it time to see a cardiologist? You know, if you're if you're going to your doctor and you're saying, you know, look, I'm having these chest pains and he keeps saying, well, maybe it's, it's this or maybe it's that or maybe, you know, <laughs> and you know something is not quite right, you know, in, in going on in your body. So you can ask him, is it time for me to see a cardiologist? And your primary care doctor will likely refer you to a cardiologist if you have serious risk factors for heart disease such as high blood pressure, diabetes, okay? But speak up and ask about one if you have a family history of heart disease. That's a generational curse. You don't have to line up and be the next in line. No, that's a generational curse. If, you had a, if you're having a, a history, a family history of heart disease, you don't have to get in line for the next one to be a, a victim of heart disease. No, or, or a condition called, it's called hereditary cardiac amyloidosis, where specific abnormal proteins build up in the heart and other organs. So we don't have to be victims of that. You know, we can, you can change that, break that generational curse today. If you're dealing with any type of um, heart issues, if you're dealing with diabetes, if you're dealing with um, high blood pressure, we, last session, we talked about, um, how beet juice, beets are excellent for lowering your blood pressure, a natural way to do it. But again, if you're in, um, your body is in a state of an emergency where your blood uh, pressure is excessively high, then of course you want to go in and take that medication to get it down and eventually, you know, wean yourself off of that working in conjunction with your doctor. All right. So let's move on. Those are four questions to ask your doctor about your heart health. Again, number one, how's my blood pressure? Number two, what are my target cholesterol numbers and how do I measure up? Number three, can you refer me to a dietitian? And number four, is it time to see a cardiologist? Okay. All right. Let's move on and talk a little bit more about what else did I have here? So I did want to talk about, um, move on here, <laughs> what to eat for a, a powerful heart. You know, we want to talk about that, but then, um, there's new answers that, you know, research is being done, you know, the technology that is being done today and that is available to us in this dispensation of time is amazing where our health in general is concerned. You know, you can, you can get a knee replacement, you can get a hip replacement, you can uh, get an elbow replacement, you know, there are so many um, new ways of keeping this body, these bodies going, you know, when it comes to um, the world's way of doing it, but we know that God has the, the final, he has the final answer in all things, praise the Lord. And we can find answers from him as well. He has, he has parts. You know, I talked about that. He's got parts, you know, he's got a new heart. You need a new heart. You need a new liver. Ask the Lord. He'll give it to you. Praise the Lord by faith. You believe that thing by faith, he'll give it to you. So um, the fight for new answers. I want to just talk briefly about that before I talk about eating for a powerful heart. 
Now, the new uses of um, screenings are um, advanced weapons being deployed in the war on heart disease. Exciting research, um, recent breakthroughs include advances in surgical techniques, implantable devices, and more effective medications. So new plumbing tools. In 30% of um, 965,000 artery clearing heart procedures performed each year, 965,000 artery clearing heart procedures are performed each year in the United States. Cardiologists, they face a tough problem, a hard calcium packed shell covering soft gooey plaque in blood vessel walls, okay? So this hardened shell can resist cardiologists' efforts to deploy artery widening balloons and stents to hold arteries open. So that's what happened, the arteries closed, you know, because they're filled with plaque and so forth. And then of course that caused you know, blood clots and heart attacks and so forth. So they have different techniques, but a new technique called intravascular lithotripsy approved by the FDA in 2021. It uses shock waves to break up these hardened deposits. It is similar to technology used to break up kidney stones. I actually had that technique done. I had kidney stones. Oh, Oh, it's been at least 10 years ago. You don't ever want to get kidney stones. And I had to go through that technique. And it wasn't um, very painful, but um, the doctor, he did go in there and um, he broke up the um, kidney stones with this new technique called lithotripsy. All right. So um, I'm not sure because this technique, actually, this was approved by the FDA in 2021. So I don't know if it was approved back then, but I did know he used shock waves. So back that was over 10 years ago. So um, it's, this technique is easier for interventional cardiologists to use the devices threaded through the arm or the leg, arteries to the heart, and may work better for hard areas deep within plaque. So um, it's more effective uh, for patients in their late 60s, 70s, and, and 80s will generally um, have calcium in their blockages. So this is an important tool for treating heart disease in older persons, particularly the elderly. All right. So let's move on. Now that's just a new, um, again, and technique they're using. So their research is being done fighting for new answers as far as our heart health is concerned so that it will no longer be the number one disease in the United States. So eating for a powerful heart, we're going to end with fat. A nutrition plan that keeps you leaner, longer, le leaner, stronger, and healthier, all right? So your doctor, or if you have to go to a heart doctor, he may ask, you know, if you're avoiding uh, saturated fat or what you're doing co to control your weight, you know, but doctors seldom ask, are you taking care of your muscles? All right? So. Check this, this is very important. Listen up. We lose about 5% of our total muscle mass every decade after the age of 30, okay? But science shows that those who retain muscle as they age, lower their risk of metabolic syndrome, obesity, diabetes, and inflammation. These are all risk factors for heart disease. Again, that's um, metabolic syndrome, obesity, and diabetes. So the primary cause of age-related muscle loss is anabolic resistance. Essentially, we can't turn the protein as we age. Sometimes it's harder to turn the protein we eat into muscle as, effic as efficiently as we did when we were younger. Okay, listen up, this is important. In order to overcome this resistance, we need higher doses of protein at each meal. And I'm not talking about in excess, you know, 25 grams at a time for women or 30 grams for men. But first it's important to find out how many grams of protein that you need a day according to your age, your height and your weight. And then you wanna add to that. Cause some, um, I wanna say sometimes, but I would say, most of the time, um, body, how can I put it? Things that are going on within the body that we think that 
it's a disease or something's wrong. It's basically just a lack of, of protein, maybe not enough carbohydrates, maybe not enough fat, maybe not enough minerals, you know, vitamins and so forth. Just a simple lack of that, but yet you have to go to the doctor to find out, you know, where you where your levels are, where your um, vital statistics are concerned, where your um, vitamin levels are concerned. You know, your um, your fat um, soluble vitamins, your minerals, your potassium, your magnesium. Those are important to be balanced within the body for optimal health. All right, and then also anything less than that. So anything less than. Uh, 25 grams at a time for women or 30 grams for men, anything less than that and your body remains in muscle loss mode. Fat starts to win out and heart health suffers. All right, so in, in addition to protein, we need a mix of high fiber grains, high nutrient fruits and vegetables and heart healthy fats to keep heart harming, fat promoting inflammation under control. <laughs> and we can do that again by eating more vegetables, Finding out, finding out where your protein levels are, your carbohydrate. Well, I would say your um, what your protein uh, needs. I'm not, not levels. Your protein needs according to your age, your um, height, and your weight. Your protein needs, and even your carbohydrate needs and your fat needs daily. All right. Find out where that is, and once you find out where that where that is, and where you may be off, <laughs> then you can incorporate, you know, more of either one of those. And that will um, reduce fat promoting information that can cause heart problems or harm the heart. Okay. So let me um, wrap it up here with eat 25 to 30 grams of protein at each meal. All right. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Make sure every snack that you eat, I've always touted that never eat a snack with just carbohydrates. Make sure you have a combination of carbohydrates and protein, such as cheese on a cracker, all right? A peanut butter with an apple, uh, something like that. Women should aim for at least 75 to 100 grams of total protein every day, but again, based on your age, weight, and height. While men should shoot for approximately 90 to 120 grams a day. So if you're eating a well-balanced meal, you know, if you're eating some uh, good uh, quality of meat, um, some good carbohydrates, um, a good um, source of fat for each meal, you're probably getting more than, you know, enough that you need sufficient amounts of protein. All right. So up, up your intake of high fiber, fiber uh, grains, cereals, and beans. In one study following um, 2,735 people, women who ate the least amount of fiber or 2.9 times as likely to die from inflammatory diseases such as heart disease. And research has found that for every additional 10 grams of fiber you eat per day, you reduce your risk of stroke by 12%. So every, the average amount for the average individual is at least 30 grams of protein a day. And most people do not get, I don't know, even five grams of protein a day. So, um, it's important to get your grams of at least 30 grams of fiber per day. So eating more colorful fruits and vegetables can help aim for eight to 10, uh, at least small servings a day. Fruits and vegetables provide fiber as well as vitamins, minerals, and thousands of micronutrients called phytochemicals. We've talked about that. As we age, our ability to extract these nutrients from foods diminishes. And that's another reason why inflammation increases. Inflammation is a killer. All right, enjoy healthy fats and oils from seafood, nuts, seeds, olives, and avocados. All right, two servings a day will help keep you lean and sharp. Whether you're enjoying a serving of salmon, a spoonful of peanut butter, some chips and guacamole, you know, um, some bread dipped in um, olive oil, but good bread, make sure that bread is good bread. All right, <laughs> and focus on fortified dairy. So if you're concerned about not getting enough calcium, remember you can get your calcium from dark green leafy vegetables like kale, spinach, all right? And one study found that those who ate three servings of whole fat dairy had lower risk of heart disease and stroke than those who ate one serving. So dairy also delivers muscle building protein, but you have to make sure you're getting the good quality of dairy. Milk is not a good <laughs> quality of um source to get even calcium or, or protein. All right. Milk is not. 
So don't drink your calories or chemicals. In particular, don't think you're doing yourself a favor. Of course, we know by drinking diet sodas, they've been linked to an increased risk of heart disease, dementia, and stroke sodas, right? So keep it simple. Filtered water. Sparkling water is okay. <laughs> Tea, coffee is okay. And it's fine to add a little milk. Add a good quality organic milk if you're going to add milk, okay? All right. So um, those are the... Um, items that I want to share with you for eating for a powerful heart. Now, I'm not through with um, talking about our heart health. We have another session coming up next week on Health Essentials, still talking about our heart health, because we know that, again, when we think about um, love, you know, we think of our hearts, you know, and who better taught us to love than God, because God is love. Amen. Amen. So I know I just shared a whole bunch of information. So make sure you know, you know this um, session is recorded. You can always go back and listen in to something that maybe you thought you missed. Or if you see me, you know, make sure you just pull me aside and ask me and I'll be happy to share it with you or do the research to find out. All right. So here's to you and optimal health. And if there's no questions, comments or concerns right now, anything. If not, we are going to close this session. I thank you all for joining in on this beautiful Tuesday morning. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, no comments, questions, or concerns. We're going to close this session. Father, we thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah for the information shared today concerning our heart health, Lord God. For we thank you that we know, Lord God, that you are love and you showed us, you are the one that showed us better than anything how to love. Hallelujah. And let us go forth, Lord God, and share this information with those as the Holy Spirit leads us to pay it forward, Lord God, and to implement these this information that has been um, shared in our own everyday health, Lord God. We thank you and praise you, giving you all the praise, honor, and glory, Lord God. I pray your choicest blessings on each and everyone that will listen in, Lord God, to hear what the saith the Lord, hallelujah, and again, implement it into their lives and their families' lives. So we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory, Lord God. And as Psalms um, 1914 says, let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer giving you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Elder B. I'm on a walk as we speak. So thank you. <laughs> yes. yes. Amen. That, walking. that was beautiful, Elder. Thank you so much. Wonderful sharing. Yes. God be the glory. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Appreciate you. Happy Valentine's Day. Yes. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> yes. Talking about love in the heart. That's great. <laughs> yes. <laughs>